Hi there booktube, it's Eleanor here and this is going to be the start of my vloggy video um, of my book buddy a -thon winter bingo challenge. Um, if you are taking part, hello and I hope yours is going well. Um, you may have finished or you may be halfway through or you may only have just started. Um, uh, I'm not sure how long it's going to take me to get through it but I'm going to try and do it in the first few weeks because I have other projects I'd like to do as well. Um, but it is a month long thing so please don't feel like you have to uh, go, go as fast as I am. I've printed off uh, my little bingo board so that I can um, stick stickers on top as I complete each challenge. The first challenge I'm, I'm going to be completing is my buddy read which is in the middle. I'm going to do that with Tracy. We're starting red, white and royal blue today. We're going to do 100 pages a day so I'll check in with you on how I'm getting on with that um, and give you a review of my thoughts at the very end when I've read it. Um, I'm also going to start my um, create your own um, Christmas movie romance um, like a it's, it's like a choose your own adventure but to make a, a Christmas movie I just think it sounds brilliant and I'm also going to oh, I'm also going to listen to an audio last Christmas which is a collection of essays about Christmas from various different famous people so three books on the go and maybe also I might start my Harry Potter illustrated edition We'll see. Um, we'll just see, sort of, I just wanted a few on the go, a non-fiction, an audio book. I've got my Harry Potter and we've got my Buddy Read just to sort of get going and sort of flip between them and sort of, yeah, I don't know. I quite fancy doing it like that anyway. So I will come back to you a bit later and let you know how I'm going on. But before then, while you're waiting, um, why don't I show you our Christmas tree and uh, some of our Christmas decorations. We don't go big in this house necessarily because we always go away just after Christmas. But um, we have got some Christmas decorations up now downstairs, our Christmas tree and a few little bits. So I'll show you that and then I'll come back to you with some of my thoughts. So it's the evening of Sunday the 1st of December and um, I've just sat down. I have not prepared as you can tell. <laughs> I have read about 50 pages of this or listened to it on audiobook. Um, I've li listened to quite a few people's or sort of essays and talking. Um, it's really just lots of different people, lots of celebrities talking about um, it, different experiences of Christmas and things that have shaped how Christmas is for them and their thoughts on Christmas and how Christmas has factored into their lives and I'm really enjoying it I just think it's really interesting and um, I think Christmas means so many things for different people and different things for different people and um, it's really I'm really enjoying it it's really nice they're quite short they're only like three or four pages at most um, each and they're all very different and with different voices and I think the audiobook is being read by all the people I'm not 100% sure um, but it's really good and yeah I'm thoroughly enjoying it so far so I'll just be dipping in and out of this I think um, and then I listened to the first hundred pages of this and oh my god I wish um, that I could read more but we're trying to just read a hundred pages a day but I would just gobble this up it's as everyone says it's really good you've got the son of the um, president of the United States and you've got the son of um, the royal family in England and there's this sort of weird hatred from one of them towards the other and um, 
there's sort of a PR thing they're having to do and it's about this relationship forming and it's about their lives and what it's like to be in these situations and high profile and um, I'm truly, truly loving this. It's um, yeah, really, really good, just as everyone says. So I look forward to letting you know how I get on further along the line on this, but um, I'm 100 pages in and I can't see um, how it could lose my interest, but we shall see. So um, I have just also decided uh, recently that I'm going to take part in the book roasts um, like magical readathon over this month and it's just she's just so innovative um, she's made a website and each Sunday the different chapters become unlocked and this was the first Sunday so the first chapter is unlocked and when you go to the website if you go to the first chapter it's now unlocked and you can read um, you know this part of this Harry Potter story and then at the bottom it's like a choose your own adventure so pick what you would do and it leads you to another page with more choices Choices, and eventually you get to a reading prompt um, and so I have ended up with the reading prompt that is to read a newly acquired or newly um, newly onto my sort of TBR book and um, so tonight I'm going to start this one uh, my build your own Christmas movie romance um, by Rianne Conk this just came in the post and it's also on my book buddy on winter bingo tbr so it fits in perfect um so i'm going to use that for the prompt of this um and it'll also tick off a prompt on my bingo board so it's sort of double bubble and then i'll see where the um board takes me next and if i also do a bit of that tonight i may also listen to the audio with Stephen Fry but follow along in my Harry Potter illustrated edition so so much going on and we've just watched Strictly and uh, we were quite sad that Alex went but our favourites had been Michelle Visage um, who was my favourite with Karim and Matilda liked um, Saffron Barker with um, and also Karim I think Karim's you know I think he's in it to win it I really hope he does um, but we had um, an hour's worth of tears at bedtime last week for Saffron Barker um, so Saffron Barker you don't watch this but you are very loved especially in our household and of the households of the children in Matilda's school you are you know a winner in their eyes and um I'm now going to watch the golden compass and the golden compass the um his dark materials uh which is also on so I'm going to go and watch that and then I shall get stuck into a bit more reading this evening um, and I'll update you a bit later on how I'm getting on. Hi there, so as usual I'm being a terrible vlogger. Um, last night was um, Monday night, uh, the 2nd of December and I went to the Walker Christmas party in London which was lovely, it was a really nice event, I met some really lovely ladies um, and a, a, another blogger that I'd not heard of before and um, a lady from the book trust and we had a really nice time. Sometimes it can be really nerve wracking going to things where you don't know anyone um, but I'm really pleased that I put myself out there and did it because um, I, I met two people who I had a lovely chat with, um, I met the wonderful Non Pratt who is great and funny and just really really interesting and we heard about new books coming out so one of them that I'm super excited with that we got in our book goodie bag comes out in February and it's called The Good Hawk by Joseph Elliott now if you are parents you may know especially parents in the UK Joseph Elliott plays Line I think it is on Swashbuckle on CBeebies and this is going to be his debut novel and his debut novel is one that is really close to my heart and something that I'm super excited to see coming out in fiction and um, because there just isn't enough of it. It's aimed at 12 years plus and it's the story of Agatha and it's a, a fantasy story. It's a story about Agatha and another boy who have to go on a journey to try and rescue members of their clan. I think it's set in Scotland um, but what I love about this is our main protagonist um, Agatha is a child with Down syndrome and I think that's just really important um, for um, people to be able to see themselves in characters and there isn't enough kick butt Down syndrome characters so I think this um, has the potential to be something really special um, so I'm looking forward to reading this and I'll let you know how I get on it's out in February next year uh, by Walker Books so I can't wait to dig in uh, we also heard about Non Pratt's new book as I said and another book which sounds amazing which is called um, The Blood Moon now if you like Sarah Crossan who does um, books in verse and you like books that are really tackling important subjects and not um, you know making them less taboo you are going to love this book um, the author um, 
read out some of this book. Her name is Lucy Cuthu. I think that's how you say it, Cuthu. Um, let me read you the blurb of this book because I just think it's going to be brilliant. It says, Blood Moon is a YA novel about the viral shaming of a teenage girl. During her seminal sexual experience with the quiet and lovely Benjamin, physics lover and astronomy fan Frankie gets her period. But the next day, a gruesome meme goes viral, turning an innocent, intimate afternoon into something sordid, mortifying and damaging. So this book really tackles um, this idea of shame that we feel about periods. And I was actually talking to Lucy after um, she'd sort of told us a bit about her book and read some of it. Um, and, you know, things like we all hide our tampons when we need to go and change them. And we feel shame in talking about these things. And I know that when we talk at school, when the children get a bit older, um, it's it, they feel as if it's something shameful that has to be hidden and that they feel disgusted by. And something that really hit home for me was Lucy said in her talk that... Um, when you Google, in fact, I'm going to do it now. When you Google periods are one of the, yeah, the top thing that comes up is um, gross and then disgusting. And uh, I just find that quite sad, really. And she read out some statistics about young girls that are not going to school during times of their period and how often these girls are out of school because they've been made to feel like it's something to be ashamed of. And I'm hoping her book is going to really, like, um, slam open some conversations and doors um, that we need to be having about this because um, women all get periods and it's not something to feel disgusted by it's something yeah we have to put up with and can be uncomfortable and horrible at times um but it's certainly nothing to be ashamed of so um i think yeah she's right to be shedding some more light on this so it was such a good evening so many different authors were talked about there's a new patrick ness book coming out called burn which sounds brilliant with dragons um there's some more cassandra clare books coming out so if you're a cassandra clare lover you'll really enjoy those and yeah i just it was just a lovely night so i went along to that i've also been reading a bit more of red white and royal blue which is my buddy read with the lovely tracy from flamingo read so i'm really enjoying that she's my buddy for this uh book buddy a thon uh winter bingo and i'm it's well on the way to being five stars for me depending on how the end goes it'll tip it from four to or five stars but it's got me engaged the whole time i'm loving the audiobook the um prince is being done with an english accent which i think is brilliant and just really adds to the sort of drama of the whole thing and it, it's a brilliant book i'm really really um enjoying it so i'm loving reading that i've read half of my sort of choose your own movie romance rom-com book and oh it's so tongue-in-cheek and funny and poking fun and parodying these netflix slash hallmark slash uh, you know these these romantic comedies that we all love but secretly feel a bit ashamed of watching because they're so cheesy um well we shouldn't be ashamed because they are cheesy but you know we love them so why feel ashamed of that but um, it does it does make a bit of a parody of them and it is quite fun to read so I'm about halfway through that I'm going to finish that tonight um, and then I will come back to you a little bit more and tell you uh, how I'm getting on and any star ratings and where I am with my bingo because uh, I'm really enjoying it and I didn't have a chance to do too much last night although as I say I did listen to some more of Red White and Royal Blue so I'll do my pages for that today and then um, move into the next one maybe even get some Harry Potter done okay so it's now tuesday evening and i've just finished red white and royal blue uh, by casey mcquiston i went a little bit ahead on this i wasn't meant to finish it till tomorrow so please forgive me tracy um but i couldn't help myself i was just really enjoying the story um when i finished it i was debating between four and five stars and i think i'm just gonna have to give it five stars because it kept me engaged the whole time it was full of sweetness it was full of um relationships that weren't involved in drama to do with cheating or someone being really mean it was just two young men exploring their sexuality exploring relationships and learning how to support each other in some of the most difficult circumstances and i just think it is um, a brilliant book there's quite a lot of politics in here and I wish I knew a little bit more about American politics um, because I think that would have added maybe a little bit more uh, of a sort of tension for me or, or perhaps sort of a little bit more enjoyment in in that part but there wasn't so much that it made me switch off at all and it just yeah it truly was just a wonderful book and I really enjoyed the audio with the a British accent that was going on 
It's about, uh, if you didn't know, because everybody's read this, um, it's about the Prince of England and the son of the uh, President of the United States and it's about this sort of um, hate relationship that has been going on where um, they haven't really got on with each other there's been this sort of friction and an incident happens at a wedding and they have to sort of try and pull together to save face and they have to attend functions together and pretend that they're friends and things go from there really and it's um it's just so much about relationships that are relatable to everybody those things that you have to go to but then obviously taken up a level because of their high profile um you know their high profile images and their family images and perhaps what um traditionally has been portrayed by um certain people and yeah i really enjoy this i'm keeping it on my shelf it's definitely one that i shall be pushing in matilda's hands when she gets much older so i'm currently part way through this one uh, which is my uh, build your own christmas movie romance so I'm going to finish that one so far let me tell you what has happened so far my main character Chrissy has lost her job in a business um, she's no longer a businesswoman and she's gone home for Christmas uh, she's also broken up with her boyfriend um, because uh, he left her it wasn't just wasn't working for him and she thought it was going somewhere and it obviously wasn't so she's gone home to her mum and dad's house her dad is no longer with them um, and they own a candy cane farm because apparently you can grow candy cane by sort of planting it like potatoes and on this candy cane farm her um, arch nemesis from school is now working alongside her mum um in the candy cane fields and she's starting to feel some um hidden feelings for him oh my god i love how this has been done and the parody of it all and um the poking fun at um these sort of films which i love and i love dearly and so i can really just enjoy the sort of merriment in this um so i'm going to finish this tonight and I'm also going to listen to a little bit more of Last Christmas. I'm enjoying the um, essays in here. And then um, not on my book uh, book buddy-a-thon winter bingo TBR, but on my magical read-a-thon TBR for Christmas, um, I had two challenges. Uh, and the first one is to read a book an old book and that was said in brackets that it could be an old book on your shelf it could be a book that looks old it could be a second hand book um so i'm going to read hungry hearts um which is 13 tales of food and love edited by elsie chapman and carolyn tung richmond um this is second hand and a little bit dirty and beaten up so that is um you know what i'm going to class as my um as my older book it's got a little bit of like scuffing on it and some stains and things uh which it had when it arrived because i bought it second hand so i'm going to start this one uh the other prompt uh that i had was to read a newly acquired book and so for that i'm going to go for this one i'm going to use this as that prompt because if i can finish this tonight um, and then i've got my hungry hearts to finish by sunday then i will have completed those two prompts as well um so yeah I'm feeling good about my reading and if I managed to get through all that and I also managed to wade through all of my watch later on YouTube I might get to some illustrated Harry Potter we shall see um but I will come back tomorrow and let you know how I got on and let you know my thoughts and feelings on the books that I've been reading and anything else that is occurring in my life okay <laughs> bye hi guys so a quick update it is wednesday and i have finished two more things um so i had finished my first book which was red white and royal, royal blue which i gave five stars and i have now finished build your own christmas movie romance um and it, this was so much fun it was such a comical uh, read i'm trying to find here pages to show you of how here so you'll get to bits where you have to pick uh, what happened this one says should Chrissy throw her wine in Cole's face or try to win him back and then depending on what you pick is where you go next which uh, is so good and I'm definitely it wasn't five stars it was probably three in terms of um, you know exactly what you got out of it but it was really fun and I'm definitely keeping it on my shelves because I'll be getting this one out every Christmas and seeing what's in store for my uh, my character <laughs> and uh, taking her on new avenues
Uh, so I then also just finished Last Christmas, which is curated, introduced by Greg Wise and Emma Thompson. This is a collection of essays from all sorts of different people, both actors, actresses, models, refugees, um, comedians. Um, loads of different people from all different walks of life talking about Christmas and what it means to them and often that starts with their first memory of Christmas or what Christmas might have been like for them growing up or if their family didn't celebrate Christmas how that felt for them and how their family reacted to that time of year and how that has then affected them later in life and just that sort of message of Christmas for them. I thought this was really good um, and I love the fact that 25p of the book um, goes to, uh, is going to go to Crisis and the Refugee Council and I just thought it was really important, it really sort of pushes to home that message that it's all about how you treat people at this time of year and spreading love and spreading joy and helping um, and giving of your time and your love and is way more important than giving of gifts so uh, this one was a really good read and I really liked how short um, you know each of these were there were maybe a few pages each so it really meant that you got sort of a really uh, big wide variety of different people's um, ideas of Christmas and um, so I finished that one and gave that one four stars and um, so that's three books finished for book buddy a thorn winter bingo I'm now going to start my next one, which is Frost Heart by Jamie Littler, which I know a lot of people have said how much they loved. Um, this is middle grade. It um, says, far out in the coldest part of the monster-infested snow sea, Ash waits for his missing parents with only his grumpy yeti guardian for company. But when an accident reveals that Ash has amazing magical powers, of course he does. Um, he's whisked aboard the Frost Heart and explore a sleigh with a daring crew who need his help. Can they help Ash master his new powers and find his family? And um, I love the illustrations uh, on this. So I've heard good things from you and from other people. So fingers crossed that this is going to be a fun fast read. I've got it on audio but I'll be following along in the book because there is illustrations throughout which I really want to be able to enjoy with the book. I'm also starting Harry Potter the illustrated edition tonight finally and um, I'm going to be reading this which is Hungry Hearts which is um, 13 tales of food and love and I've heard I think I saw this first on uh, Kayla from uh, Books and Lala's channel talking about um, how good this was I don't often read short story collections so when someone really pushes one home and it sounds like it might be up my street I like to give it a go because I do want to enjoy them more um, and these are meant to be sort of lots of different stories but they all end up being sort of interconnected um, I think she explained it as like in one story someone might be delivering donuts to somewhere um, and then the person they've delivered the donuts to is the person who is the main character in the next sort of story so that kind of thing where they're all sort of joined together but obviously there's going to be some sort of food element so I'm looking forward to reading this so these two and my Harry Potter illustrated are going to be my next ones uh, let's see if I can get them finished before Sunday because I would like to put these up as sort of weekly vlogs otherwise they're going to be huge um, so we shall see but I shall be going into these and I'll come back and let you know how I go on hi guys so here we are again um it is sunday it's been a week since uh, i started december and reading and i'm doing pretty good so far uh i have finished another book since i spoke to you i haven't um filmed on here for a couple of days because i haven't really read much um i have been listening to a little bit of uh, the butterfly girl by renee denfield and i think i'll probably end up finishing this tonight this is the second book in um a sort of series oh, i don't know if it's going to be a series or a duology i will find out when i finish this book but um the first book was called the child finder and that was about naomi who was um a child finder she worked as a private sort of investigator searching for children where other people have sort of given up and um felt like there was no avenue to sort of look down where the police and, and fbi or whoever have failed um and she was uniquely qualified for the job because she had been someone that had been kidnapped and escaped um although she has sort of no real memory of what happened and she can't remember certain things um so she's your average sort of damaged main character and um, so she was sort of uniquely um, had the expertise of looking for certain things that maybe other people like the police wouldn't have thought of. Um, and I loved that book. I thought it was really good. And I definitely wanted to read this one. This one then is sort of following her um, looking into her sister. 
I won't say any more because I don't want to ruin certain things that happen in the other book but so far really enjoying it it's well on its way to being at least a four star um, so I should finish that today I'm hoping also to um, get a decent chunk of this one done Hungry Hearts um, which is 13 Tales of Food and Love and I'm really enjoying this I've read the first three stories they're all written by different people but they all intertwine in this one place called Hungry Hearts Row which is uh, sort of a row or, or sort of a villagey area where um, there's lots of different food establishments and each story is um, a different young person we're following but they all sort of intertwine very subtly so in the first book we have a um, father and daughter who have um, sadly lost the mother and they've gone to visit the aunt uh, who lives in this hungry hearts row and they've ordered Chinese takeaway um, the next is about the people from the Chinese takeaway and then um, the next one am I on the third or have I only read two maybe I've only read two I've only read two and so the next one will hopefully be following someone that was mentioned in the other one and they all sort of link in that way which I really like and actually I'm really enjoying these short stories I often find that short stories don't work for me um, and these aren't going to be five stars I don't think uh, but there's certainly, um, each story I've read so far is certainly three or four stars. Um, I think the first one I'd probably give uh, three and the second one four. Um, but I'm really enjoying it. So uh, those are the two books that I'm working on at the moment. I still have yet to start my Harry Potter Illustrated Edition. I don't know what I'm waiting for, but something is holding me at back who knows but hopefully that will happen soon um, and the book that I finished since I last spoke to you is Frost Heart by Jamie Littler and I really loved this I listened to it in audio but I also followed along because it has got these wonderful illustrations which are really nice to be following along with um, and this is the story of um, Ash he's a bit of an outcast in his village he's got this ability where he can sing to these monsters that terrorize these towns they sort of um, you know try to um eat them and uh, if they leave their sort of borders of their villages they attack them so hunting parties go out and often don't come back um and this sort of power is feared by people it's a way of communicating with them but it's said to lead to more destruction than good and but it's something inside him he doesn't feel like he can um sort of push down any longer there is this sort of fact that his parents are missing or disappeared or not been around for years and he has this guardian who's a yeti who's the only sort of other outsider in the village that they've managed to sort of take him in and we're sort of following him and this event that happens that leads him onto um this sort of boat thing ship um and what happens when they go on this adventure and how he sort of finds out more about his powers more about his parents more about this sort of prophecy and it's really good fun it's the start of a series it's going to be a really good middle grade adventure series i'm definitely going to be reading the next one and i gave it four stars so that was good let me go get my bingo sheet hold on so so far i have crossed off um four on my bingo board i've done my buddy read i've done my family at the center of the story i've done my red or green on the cover and i have done my oh what was this one uh oh 2019 release so i've done four uh when i finished um actually none of these are relevant so i need to start reading another one on there um i'm not sure which yet so i'll have to have a think what was my yeah i have to check but i'm gonna be working on that again this week if i can do another four that would be amazing we'll have to see it's a really busy week um and then also i've been working on my magical readathon so the hungry hearts is for that and it is um my sort of battered older book it came second hand it's got sort of marks all over it um, and then the other one that I had to read for my prompts for that this week was um was it a new book I can't remember what it was now anyway what hit the prompt for that one was my um read your own uh, build your own christmas netflix movie romance thing so that is read and done so as soon as i finish this one i can move on to the next prompts um but i'm gonna go and find out what they are now so i can sort of plan my week of reading um and you'll have to watch the next vlog next week to find out how i do um but i'm gonna leave you with uh, my first christmas present of the year um if i haven't mentioned it on here i don't know if i have we end up having quite a few christmases um because we've got various grandparents 
parents that come in from different places and we have um, cousins and uh, not lots of family but this weekend was dedicated to Christmas with my father-in-law and his sister and they came down to stay for the weekend and we had Christmas number one um, and there were some presents we didn't do many because we are going to centre parks next August and all the grown-ups have um, contributed towards that for a lovely long weekend in centre parks um, so we didn't do big presents with each other and we weren't really meant to do any presents but as always we all ended up doing something little and um, my um, my father-in-law sister um, Anne who is amazing and always has really lovely thoughtful gifts and um, bought me this centered tin it's a travel it's by a company called centered it's travel it's mindful aromatherapy mini balms um, so it, it's a lovely tin and it opens like this and inside you've got five different balms um, so they look a bit like um, solid perfumes but they've all got different um, aromatherapy scents. So there is a de-stress, focus, be happy, sleep well and escape. And then it comes with a little sheet that tells you about what aromatherapy oils are in there and you just rub them onto your um, pressure points. And I'm just really loving them. Um, and when you give them a smell, they really help to centre you or um, you know lift you up or whatever it is. It says, they, I love this escape, which is my favourite one. Um, and it says escape to indulge your senses and be inspired balancing grounding and sensual a luxurious and exotic scent including oud sandalwood and frankincense and i just really love it i'm finding it very um calming and lovely so um it's just a really thoughtful lovely gift and i'm really enjoying it so i'm going to be leaving that in my book room and of an evening putting on uh the one that i feel like i need at the time so first christmas present and i'm really happy with it and uh, very thankful so Yes, I'll catch you next week and let you know how I've got on with my Book Buddyathon Winter Bingo Team BR and also what my prompts are for the Magical Readathon. Um, but I'm going to go off now and read this week's chapters and find out what my prompts are. So uh, wish me luck and uh, I'll speak to you soon. Bye for now, Booktube.